Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing work on my Voron 2.4 R2 Pro Plus. So let's go ahead and get started. PCBY. I want to thank PCBY for sponsoring the Minimal 3DP channel on this video in particular. So my last video, I got a lot of this stealth burner put together. And now I need to um, finish putting together the EBB board and getting this all set up. So let me get my pieces and parts ready and we'll see how that looks. I'm gonna hold this up now. I also want to point out, and I'm hoping maybe some people will give me some feedback. I actually got a new camera I'm really happy with, and it really looks like you're going to be able to see details significantly better than what I did have. So I'm just really proud of this, and I want to especially thank my wife who made this possible. Uh, well, she makes most things possible, but she helped me uh, save money to get the camera and surprised me. So I'm really happy with this. So let me get my parts together and get the directions called up and then we'll get moving. So on screen, I have the last step I completed. I wired in um, everything. So it appears I have all the wires connected. I do need to move this down and I'm moving that underneath the wire holder here. So you can see now, Something I've had problems with in the past, I had the Nomi on here. I've been dumb enough to not put the wires in the grooves. And then when I started putting everything together, I actually sliced the wires myself. So you want to make sure all those wires are behind these little holders and going where they should need to be. Now, on the next step here, I'm going to actually install the EBB board. Let's move some pieces around. So I have the motor here i have the little piece right here that you'll see up here in the directions and the board's going to go something like this and let's see if i can orient this correctly there we go it's going to go something like this and we need to get this piece in. Now I'm gonna hold this like this. It looks like I need to situate this sort of like this. This is basically to have the part stand off of here so it doesn't rub against here. So let me get my screws out and then we'll get that all together. Now the button heads I need actually came with the kit. So that's helpful. Um, so let's push one of these through. Now it looks like there's a little bit of plastic here. So there's a little bit of plastic over the squirrel hole, so just be aware of that. And I'm just gonna put this like this, and I'm gonna have to screw through the plastic there. Now it shouldn't really matter much, because if I screw this through, so I'm gonna screw this through, I said it shouldn't matter um, if I'm stripping the plastic or whatever, because this is just going to be a standoff piece. So that they're basically going to screw into um, these threaded inserts. So let's get this. And again, you can see right here, here's the little bit of plastic. So when I take the screw, it literally just pops through. And I probably want to get rid of that plastic. And what I'm discovering is it's already on my fingers. And I just dropped my screw. So that's lovely. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to screw this in. Get it most of the way through the plastic. I'm going to back this one out a little bit. I'm going to back out the screws to its very edge of the plastic. That's on the very edge. And then what I'm going to do is flip this like this. And then screw this into now what's interesting is this is actually gonna fit 
I need to fit this into here. So let's see how I can do this. We need to take this back piece off. I want to say that's perfect. That's sort of in there good. So let's see if I can get these screws to go into the thread of inserts. And I can feel that yes, yes, they did. Or at least that one did. So let's get this one. Now you can see the USB slipped into here. Well, that still closes, so that's okay. Now let's look and see what our next step is since this is in. Now we need to, right here is where the heat sink goes, right on the gold. So let's get our little pieces and parts here. So I get the heat sink. I'm going to strip the bottom off. Then just put this heat sink right here. So I got the heat sink in. Um, again, that's nice and easy. Now it looks like we need to plug in the 120R jumper. So let's look and see if we can figure out where this jumper is at. I think that's right over here. Uh, it's right here in this area so let's look so we can see it right over here next to these two connectors and there's nothing on there so let's now one of the problems we have here we need to be very careful with these spares this is an extremely tiny 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 jumper so let's hold this up so you can see how tiny the jumper is. So I'm just going to very carefully insert that. That went relatively easily. So you can see it's right there on the end. Okay, so I have that jumper installed. And then it looks like the wires need to come into the back here. So let's look. I think it goes right here. So let's move this up through here. And I'm just going to slip this in. Okay, so that's installed. So now I have the motor plugged in. Everything feels tight. I just want to check that. Now I'm just going to put these pieces. I want to close this so I don't lose anything. You got to keep this because I, with those tiny jumpers, those are brutal if you drop them. Problem we have is, let's see, we need to see if we have enough wire here to make this all work. Now, I'm going to sort of put this together, and it looks like. I have the thermistor and the hot end. And it looks like I need 103. Those go about there. Okay, so I'm going to need to change the ends here on this. These use a different size. So let's. Looks like I have enough slack. So tentatively, looks like it fits. So I think there's enough slack there in that line. And let me just read this and we'll figure out what we need to do. It looks like I need to adjust the switches here. And what I'm noticing is this is another case where there's a little piece of plastic on here. So I can't get to those switches. So let me just use my fingernails and a pair of tweezers. Let me see if I have something that's a little thinner. Let's see if I can get this off. So I'm just trying to peel the plastic off. Maybe my fingernail is still the best. So let me jump off camera here. Let me get that piece of plastic out because I'm going to have to find a better pair of tweezers. And so I'm just taking the plastic off the switches so I can get the thermistor set right. So I got the plastic off. You can see it there. I'm just looking at these switches. And let me see if I can tell how they're set. So first thing I need to do is looks like I have the two wire thermistor. 
So I have a two wire thermistor. And so that's the PT100. So if we look at the switches, it looks like it's already set as exactly what I need. So that's okay. Problem we have is I'm going to need to plug this in, I believe right here, or I'm sorry, plug it in right here. And if we look at the connector, it's a two prong connector. And looking at this, this actually needs to be plugged in to the two in the middle. Now, easiest thing to do probably is to change out the connector on here. In fact, that's what I'm going to have to do. I'll change out the connector and I'll change out the connector on the thermistor while I'm at it. And that way we should be able to plug everything in. As we can see, the connectors are PH2. You'll see that in the bottom in the text. Now I have this little kit I bought for the two connectors. And what I'm going to do is just use this. And these are a little bit hard to do. So I'll show you how I connect. And I'm just going to change out this connector um, using the little kit. So let me get my tools, and then we'll do that. Now to start, I'm just going to cut these as close to the connector as possible. So I'm just taking the connector out. The, even if I tried to get these uh, the metal pieces out in here, they're too big to fit in the 2.0, so I just need to throw that out. On my wires, there's a little bit of a rubber sheath around the wire. I'm just going to take that off. And then these don't particularly matter with polarity. I'm just going to strip these down. So I'm just stripping them. I'm using my wire cutters that are good for wires that have cloth on them. I got these for a dollar at Harbor Freight. I think they were on clearance. So you can see what they are. They're just tiny, but they're really good when it comes to trying to cut through the sheathing on the um, any of the wires with cloth on, which typically are my thermistors. Close this. So what I'm doing is I'm going to use the 0.13 or yeah, 0.13 on my And I'm putting the little metal connector in there. I'm going to insert the wires in, crush it down. I'm going to push the wings in a little bit, and then I need to crush those wings down. Give it a tug. My wires appear to have be okay. So now what I'm going to do is just put this in and looking at the diagram, looks like we need the wires in the middle here. I'm just going to, oops, stick them in right side up. So the first one's in. Let's get the second. Oops. So I dropped the connector. You have to be careful with these because these are tiny, 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 tiny. And so I have another one out. It's probably sitting here somewhere on my desk. I just can't see it. It's a problem with getting old. Keep crushing it down. I'm going to close the wings a little bit. Push those with my fingers, flush them down. And this is fun because, again, this is really tiny. The pH2s are so small. Now that looks like, I'm going to give this a tug test. Looks like I have that in there. I'm hoping that's tight. Now I want to do the same with the thermistor. And hopefully, I have enough slack with the thermistor. I think I do to change this out. So I'm going to do the same thing with the thermistor. I'm going to cut this as close to the connector as possible. 
how I insert these wires doesn't matter. Throw the connector away so it's not sitting here. And then let me get those wires connected. And I'm just using this little connector here. And that should fit right in here. Yep, so that fits right there. So let's get the, let me wire up the thermistor. And again, the polarity on these wires doesn't matter. So I just need to connect it. I don't need to worry about making sure which side which is on. Now hopefully, again, we have this tight. A little concerned about this, but meh, we're just going to go with it. And then let me strip these wires and get it connected, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have both connectors done. Now, let's go back because I want to look at these steps again. I probably need to connect this once I have it set up. Um, so let's look at this. The tab needs to go at the top. It's going up here. That's okay. Now I have those pieces, so let's switch over to the other set of directions. So what I think we need to do is we have, I have the tap on the printer. It looks like I now need to mount the top over on the printer. So let's move forward with that. So I'm trying to figure out the wiring for the tap, and that looks a little difficult. So I'm gonna, I will work on that as soon as I step on the dang tripod. So I'm just plugging in the wire in the back here, tap, and this is the wire that'll go over to the EBB board. So I'm just gonna put that aside and let me figure out my next steps and then I'll come back. I've switched back over to my desk real quick because I noticed that I forgot to wire up the limit switch. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, according to the directions, if I look at that, I need about 175 wire. So I'm just going to real quickly cut this and have what I need here. So I'm doing about 175 millimeters. So let me just compare these two and I'm using silicone wire. I'm just doing this real quick. So I have my two wires and I'll be honest, soldering is not my forte. So when I do this, if you have any suggestions, go ahead and I'm open to them. I'll also accept criticisms because uh, I'm pretty honest with myself on where things go. Uh, so I have my two wires. I have my limit switch here, but what you need is a limit switch with two little screws here, the three wires. It has text with uh, C common, uh, NO and then NC for normally closed. And this is the type of limit switch we want. And I'm just going to take this limit switch off of this board here, and then we'll solder this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is an awesome service that lets you design and then they build for you PCB boards. One of their awesome features is you can go to their instant quote you can upload a Gerber file, and then based on the parameters you put in, they'll give you an instant quote. I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring the Minimal 3DP channel on this video in particular. In order to do this, what I'm going to do is go down here and just clip these wires. So I'm just clipping them down at the solder line. And I think I have that cut. Yeah. So let's take out these screws. There's actually screws already on the tap to hold this in. So we see I have that cut. Now these wires are still bent. What I'm going to do is very gently straighten these out. So I have more room to work. So I'm just use my needle nose pliers here and gently straightening these out. So I have those straight, and then I can throw this part away. Don't need that. So this is the part I'm going to solder. 
Now, let me get a couple more pieces, parts here, and then we'll solder it together. So I'm gonna start off by stripping the ends of these wires. So I've stripped the end and strip this end. Now to do this right, we're gonna tin these. So I'm just gonna lay these wires out when we move things out of the way, get rid of the trash. And I've heated this up. I have my solder here. I'm taking solder and iron. Touching the wire. So I'm not doing a very good job, but I think I have at least the start of that wire. So let's get the other side. Like I said, I am 100% not good at soldering. That side looked like it went a little bit better. So I have that side tinned. I'm going to put my soldering iron down. Now, I want to do the actual... In now. So let's get this. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I want to take the soldering iron and I want to hold the soldering iron to the pin. And then I'm going to just put the solder, a little bit of solder on the end here. So that's good. And then let me switch and we'll get the next part going. What I'm going to do is take the wire, touch the touch the heat to it, and the wire should just stick to the prong. As you can see, that actually stuck. So they're both on there now. And what I think I'm going to do is let me put some heat shrink on there. Now, for a little extra strength, I've put two heat shrinks on here. Let me go ahead and I'm going to blow those off camera. I'm just going to make sure they're pushed all the way down. And then I'll blow those off to close them around and I'll come right back. So as you can see, I finished up the heat shrink. So we have that on there now. And that should give us extra strength holding that wire in there. And somehow I dropped things that got dark hair over everything. Yeah. So I have red wire at the top here. And that looks good. Let's get the connector on here, the bottom, and then we'll switch back over to the printer. As you can see from the diagram, it is not crystal clear as to how these wires are supposed to go. So what I'm going to do is I've stripped the ends here, and I'm going to go, let me think about this for a minute. I'm going to go red. Now I'm going to hold this exactly as they have it in the diagram. And I'm going to do signal wire. So I'm orienting a three pin like this. I'm going to do the black on the outside, red on the inside. Now, probably I'm going to have this wrong. So if the send stop doesn't work, I'll need to come back and rewire it. But I have slack here, so I'm OK. So let me put the ends of this in. OK, so I have the end on here. So I, I guess it's OK. So we have that. And let's go ahead over to the printer again, and we'll get this, see if we can get everything wired. So the first thing I'm going to do is take out these little screws here. This is where my end stop's going to go. So I'm going to take out these screws, and they are tiny, so we want to be really careful here. So I have the screws out, and then, I'm just going to take the end stop, 
and slip this through here. Well, that doesn't need to slip through there. Maybe this needs to go around. Well, now we've got to figure out how to, oops. And I think I'm going to go through the back here. Yeah, that's what I want. And I want the door here, oops, face downwards. So this has to be down. So let's see if we can get these screws in. I'm just going to start one right here. Let's get that situated. And I'm just getting the other screw in. So that's in. Now let's go over. That does hit the side, so that looks right. And now we'll start getting the hot end installed here. So let's move this back a little bit. And I'll, let me fix the camera. And for the camera, what I'm, well, for the next step, what I'm gonna do, not for the camera, but I need to set up, and put in these two screws. So I need two screws right here. And I'm leaving those out just a tiny little bit. I'm going in about that far. That looks okay. So everything's moving right. And this is gonna have, where is it? Let's find the pieces. This is gonna sit somewhere up like this. This is gonna slip in there. We need to back this one out a little bit. So it's going to sit something like this, and I'll need to tighten that in. Now, I've read online that there should be little button heads down here to sort of support the hot end. So let me find some button heads and I'll put those in. Okay, so I've put two small button heads here. And now, according to the directions, and let me get them called back up, this piece should sit. It's snugly right in here, which it does. So that's awesome. So that fits nice and snug. So let's get the directions caught up as well. Now I have two M310s. I'm going to take this piece off. And there's holes right in here and over here. And those are going to go into there. So we're going to try to get this. I got that barely started. I'm going to go right through here. So let's tighten this in. This is tight in the whole top here. Directly to make sure that's tight. So that's looking okay. So we have that in. Now we need to do the bottom piece in. And so this is going to slide up and we need it to slide around those screws. We're going to tighten those. I'm not going to tighten them too much. And let me move this wire. Let me loosen this. I want this wire towards the back here. I want that sticking out to the front. Okay. So this hooking into those loose screws we put in there in a previous step. So let's hold this. I'm just tightening these enough so it holds it in. Okay. That's looking really good. I like that. Now, let's see. Let's take a look at this next step. So we need to find our M325s and M350s. So we find those and we'll get those ins installed. Now, I'm making sure all my wires are tucked. And then I'm just going to take this. And this should snap right in. So let me get over here. 
lift my light up so I can see. So I have the front on here, and then all I need to do is screw this in. I'll be honest, this was really tight, hard to get on here, which is one of the problems I, I constantly have when I'm working, particularly with the stealth burner. I always seem to have trouble getting the pieces to fit together. I'm not going to tighten this too much right now. But I'm tightening this top first because that's where the connection is. Now screwing it together, it's looking pretty good. So I said this part's looking all right now. So we're getting this in, getting this all together. Like I said so far, and this is looking okay. Now, as far as I know, the only thing I need to do is connect my wires here on the side. So we have our hot end. Now let's first do our thermistor. So thermistor's in, hot end is in. Now let's get the, let's see if we can get our and stop plugged in. Let me see if I can move this around a little bit just so you can see the wiring, so you can see how I'm plugging it in. So give me a second, let me move some stuff around. So I'm just running the end stop through on the bottom here. That's actually going right here. So yeah, so the end stop's in the correct spot. Now I just need to basically rewire the tap onto a 2.5 connector. So let me unconnect, let me disconnect this wire. So what I'm gonna do is put this on the 2.0 wire. So let's switch over to my desk and we'll do that. So what I'm gonna do is cut the end off here. And I need to strip off some of the sheathing here. So let's see if we can get this off. Now, I'm really thankful that the wiring here at least matches the direction. So I'm seeing that already. So if we look here, they're black, red, and yellow, which that's been a problem in the past where some of the wiring doesn't match. I forget which project I was working on recently, but there was another. So I have these set up. And from the look of things, I need to set this up on my pH. Now, do I have a five pin? It's going to really stink if I don't. Ah, thank goodness. Thank goodness. So we have the pin here. We have the connector here. So that was in my little bin of parts. So that's good. Again, that would have made me really aggravated. And it looks like I need to go in the three holes in the middle. I want to orient this like this. And I want black, yellow, red. And I'm looking at this diagram right here. So I'm looking at this right there. So I'm going black, yellow, red. So let's strip this wire. So I just stripped that. I'm going to put a connector on. I'm going to apologize. My daughter's cat has decided to come into the room and start I guess scratching my stuff because I'm not paying attention to her. Because the, the dang cat when my daughter's not here wants me to play with her. And I'm about as fun as you can imagine, which probably isn't too fun. Um, okay, let's, let me do the connectors here and I'll just do those off camera and I'll come right back. So as we can see, the cat is back and all in my business. So give me a second here, let me pet her. Again, this is my daughter's cat. She's a good girl, but she is needy and needs lots of attention. 
somebody continue trying to wire this and pet the cat simultaneously. If you hear noise in the background, I apologize. She's again just wants attention. Okay, so I have the connector in. And now let's switch back over. We'll install this. And then I should have for right now everything wired up like I need it on the tool head. And then I need to begin work on the electronics underneath. And then I'll eventually wire the uh, CAN cord and all that. Let me get this installed and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so I have connected the tap wire to the back here. And then what I've done is run the tap wire up over the motor and then plugged it in here at the top. So the tap is all plugged in and set up appropriately. So this is the basic wiring that's needed for the both the tap, the EBB board, and the stealth burner. Now, I'm not able to connect the can wiring because I don't have any electronics in. In my next video, I'll be doing the electronics. I also want to take a moment to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. It meant a lot to me, and I really appreciate it. If you get a chance, please go to the website and take a look at all the awesome services they have. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I thank you for joining me today. Hope you have a good day. Bye. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.